afternoon and welcome to this important discussion of the Student Journalist Free Speech Act. I'm Mark Lodato, Dean of the Newhouse School at Syracuse University. I want to start by offering my thanks to our esteemed panelists for being a part of this event and to Roy Gutterman, director of the Newhouse School's Tully Center for Free Speech and a champion of student journalist rights for organizing this. As a former journalist, a former student journalist, and of course, as the head of a school that is home to hundreds of student journalists, I am keenly aware of what's at stake. Journalism lies at the heart of our democracy, the only profession protected by the Constitution. And yet student journalists, whose work is often as important as that of professional journalists, are not offered those free speech and free press protections even as their work is recognized for excellence with honors such as the Hearst and SBJ Awards. It is also vulnerable to stifling and censorship. As educators and legislators, it is our job to address this problem, so I welcome today's discussion and I am honored to host it at the Newhouse School. Welcome, thank you, uh, Dean Lodato. It's a pleasure to be here and I thank everybody for joining us today. I'm Roy Gutterman, I'm director of the Tully Center for Free Speech and one of the co-coordinators of the New York New Voices campaign uh, working on the Student Journalist Free Speech Act. Uh, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge with respect the Onondaga Nation, fire keepers of the Haudenosaunee, the indigenous people on whose ancestral land Syracuse University now sits. Today, we're gonna be talking about student journalist press rights. Uh, an issue that I've been interested in since I started my career in journalism in high school in New Jersey, uh, right after the um, uh, Hazelwood decision was handed down by the Supreme Court. So for a generation, we've had uh, student journalists working under potentially rigid conditions, ripe with censorship and other controls and punishment. And uh, today we're here to talk about that. 15 states, as of December, have some sort of uh, Student Journalist Protection Act. And uh, New Jersey, my home state, just passed one in December. And here in New York, we've been working for several years to try to get the Student Journalist Free Speech Act passed. Today, we're going to explore that with the sponsors of this law. Uh, and it's in the bill stage right now. We're going to talk with some of the coordinators for the, the, the effort. And uh, we're gonna talk with some real life journalists who are also supporting us. Um, before we begin, I would also like to make some acknowledgements and thank uh, several people who have made this possible. Rachel Cooper, uh, the Tully Center's uh, program assistant, Amanda Griffin out of the Newhouse Special Events Office, Jeff Pacetti, our designer, R.C. Concepcion, our, our technical producer, and Brian Tibbins, our IT guru who is uh, behind the scenes directing today's event. I would like to also introduce all our, our, our all-star panel of, of speakers and uh, also acknowledge that we will be utilizing the chat and uh, the Q&A function, and uh, we'd like to uh, get some discussion going as well. So, our, our esteemed panelists today are Assemblywoman Donna Lopardo from the 123rd District down the highway from us in Binghamton. Welcome. We have Brian Cavanaugh, Senator from uh, New York and Brooklyn area who is in transit into the event today. He will be with us. Um, Mike Simons from Corning High School just west of us and Katina Peron from New York City who are the co-coordinators of our, our effort here in New York, and Christina Kinsey, our new Empire State Scholastic Press Association Executive Director, and Marie Morelli, the editorial lead at Syracuse.com and the Post Standard, and Tim Kennedy, the uh, president and CEO of Advance Media New York, uh, publisher of the Post Standard and Syracuse.com. Thank you for your generous time. Thank you for all your work on this. And I'd like to kick it over to um, Christina to welcome you as our ESPA director and uh, to say a few words. Awesome, thank you, Roy. Hello everyone and welcome. 
first, I would like to thank Professor Gutterman and all of the other individuals who continue to push the legislation for student press rights forward. My name is Christina Kinsey, and I am the Executive Director of the Empire State School Press Association, otherwise known as ESPA, that runs out of the Newhouse School. Since its founding, ESPA has been providing education, resources, and recognition to aspiring high school journalists in New York State. ESPA was co-founded in 1937 by M. Lyle Spencer, then Dean of the School of Journalism at Syracuse University, and Dr. Douglas W. Miller, who became the first executive secretary. In the beginning, the organization was supported by a board of several directors, all teachers from high schools around the state. ESPA is a regional student press organization that is a member of the National Scholastic Press Association. In 2021, we reimagined ESPA with a virtual award ceremony to re-engage high school journalism programs. We are looking forward to bringing back workshops and opportunities to engage student journalists in New York State and growing ESPA's membership in the years to come. This summer, we have collaborated with our pre-college program at Syracuse University to offer several journalism-based classes. We welcome you to get involved and share the information with others around New York State. As journalism continues to evolve, we seek to inspire scholastic journalists and recognize the value of the content they create. In a world where misinformation is so prevalent, it is our duty to make sure our students who are on the front line of all the current changes in our society can report accurately. They need to know their voices matter and that the work they are doing makes a difference. Our students want to be taken seriously and they shouldn't fear being censored for reporting the reality of situations. The work to remove the censorship barriers is so important in ensuring that our students don't get discouraged and that we allow them to continue to pursue journalism as the career is, that is their passion. Again, thank you to all that are working diligently on the behalf of the voices of our future. Thank you, Christina. You're welcome. Assemblywoman Laporto, thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a, a strong advocate for student speech. Please tell us uh, about your, your bill and the impetus for this. Certainly, well, hi everybody. Uh, let me make sure I'm unmuted. Uh, well, thanks for organizing this. This is very impressive that this group came together uh, to reach out uh, on behalf of this effort to pass the student Journalist Free Speech Act. Uh, you know, thank you, Tully Center, Ray, um, Roy. Uh, thank you to the uh, Empire State School Press Association, Christina. Uh, I want to thank my colleague, Senator Kavanaugh, who's the sponsor of the bill uh, in the Senate. And also a, a big shout out to our colleagues, Assemblyman Pomisano and Senator O'Mara, who first raised this issue and were the original sponsors of the bill uh, as a direct result of uh, Mike Simon's advocacy based on an issue uh, in, uh, in his area of the state. Uh, I also wanna thank student journalists across the state. Um, I was a young student journalist a very, very long time ago. Uh, and a special shout out to Curtis High School uh, who has, they have a very, very robust uh, journalism program and have been at the center of some of our advocacy. They uh, took our Advocacy 101 training and have been meeting with legislators. So I'm very proud of the students at, Cur at Curtis High School uh, I learned firsthand as a young student journalist uh, how, what censorship feels like. Um, a lot of the things that we were interested in reporting at the time were very politically unpopular, and we were unable to publish our stories of concern of the issues of the day. Uh, that may very well have sparked my career in politics, to be honest with you. Uh, I um, you know, know how frustrating it can be to have an important voice and have that um, uh, be censored. So I have a personal background in, in, and a real pride in the student uh, journalists who do prevail and who want to be able to act as responsible journalists using responsible journalistic ethics under the watchful eye of a, an advisor in a very supportive school setting. Uh, we are um, uh, undertaking a very, um, robust approach to the bill this year. I was gonna say more aggressive, but a, a very much more assertive approach uh, to the bill this year. We lost track for a couple of years, to be honest, over COVID. Uh, and now uh, once we get past the budget, 
uh, we're going to be going full steam ahead on this. I did uh, refer earlier to uh, Advocacy 101. Uh, some of us participated in doing a training for students about how to approach the legislature uh, to thank those sponsors who are already uh, who've already put their name on the bill, to try to understand um, what the, uh, the concerns that uh, legislators may have. Uh, a quick snapshot for you at the moment, we have 34 assembly sponsors and nine Senate sponsors, all told that represents 20% of the full legislature. Not a bad start, but to really get a critical mass going, I think we're going to be needing, going to be needing some, some additional names. Uh, just a, a point of, of reference, and some of you may want to uh, opine on how this might be, but in the assembly, we have the most, um, some of the most liberal members of the legislature and some of the most conservative on this particular bill. And you rarely ever see that. Uh, so it shows, again, you, we could ponder on why that is, but it does show that it has broad reach and a, and a larger appeal that I think we need to explore further. But central to the resistance, I think, and to the concerns that we're having expressed and what we really need to address through stories and through individual advocacy is that there is a real feeling that somehow uh, stories will be told that will reflect poorly on the school, that stories will be told that will not be supervised properly and that will not in fact follow those journalistic ethics that we're so proud of that are spelled out very specifically in, in this bill. So we passed uh, last week uh, in honor of uh, Student Press uh, Freedom Day, uh, a resolution through, through the legislature. Uh, we plan on talking about that. It's a symbolic gesture. It's a very important one to show our commitment. Uh, so long story short, we've got 20% support. I think we're going to be able to get a lot more people on the bill through individual storytelling and having students from that individual's district reach out and explain that this is a fundamental uh, right and also something extremely important to their educational opportunity. Um, so I'm, I'm just very grateful for, for all of you uh, lending your professional expertise and leadership to this. It means a lot to, to me and to journal, obviously to the student journalists across the state. Uh, as a, a censored journalist, um, I can you know, think back to, to how I felt. And right now, I feel very proud to have, uh, have gone through that and to have brought this sensibility into politics today. So thank you very much, everyone. I look forward to hearing from the panel and answering questions. Before we hand it off, um, can you tell, walk us through a little bit of the legislation and what it says and, and what the protections actually are, are that are proposed? Well, do we have um, Senator Kavanaugh on the line yet? Uh, I don't think he's with us yet. Okay. Well, I mean, the, the bill is fairly, you know, the bill is fairly straightforward. I mean, we're defining uh, what student journalist free speech rights are. Uh, we define a student journalist. We define what a student media advisor is. All of the standards just to set the stage as to what, as to what we're talking about. But the heart and soul of the bill, and it's really rather quite short, reads, there shall be no prior restraint of material prepared for official publications of an educational institution, except for the material described in the section below. There are exemptions. Nothing in this article shall impose, you don't mind me reading it, it's very clear, nothing sure. in the article, sorry, shall impose a duty on educational institution administrators to review school-sponsored media prior to publication to the extent that they do, and we assume that they will, because of the media advisor, um, forms of expression shall not be protected in this article. Expressions that are libelous, <laughs> slanderous or obscene, expressions that constitute an unwarranted invasion of privacy, expressions that violate federal or state law, or expressions that incite students to commit an unlawful act. We pretty much rehearse in the bill, the journalistic code of ethics. And we basically say, and we assume that there will be um, you know, supervisors, um, advisors to, to, the, um, uh, to the group that will make sure that so long as they are following these, this, the standard, uh, they will be able to, uh, to print their stories. And that's really all there is to it. It's not a very long bill. 
two pages. Two pages, but several years in the making. Absolutely. We're in the uh, process of I moving. Say, if I might yeah. just say, when I took on this assignment, I did not anticipate that here in the state of New York, uh, it would be this uh, difficult <laughs> or this challenging. Uh, so just an editorial comment on that. Uh, I just, I guess I assume that New York, New York would immediately embrace this idea, uh, want to celebrate student journalists and understand the time we're in, that we want to encourage journalism uh, as opposed to narrowing their, uh, you know, their efforts. So I see my, my colleague has joined us. Hello, Senator. Hi there. How are you? Doing well, thanks. How are you? Good. I just gave a lowdown on the bill, simple, but very rich. And, you know, talked a little bit about how 20% of our colleagues are on the bill, but our challenge now is to, is to get more, so. Yep. Great. Well, Good to see everybody. Yes, welcome, Senator. Thank you. And I think you're up. You're up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't. I didn't want to jump yeah. in. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I apologize. I'm traveling today, so I'm not in my, you know, uh, my office. I hope the sound and the video are okay. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really a pleasure to be with all of you. Um, as I, I just was hearing uh, my colleague, uh, Senator Lopardo say, um, we have been at this for a few years, and uh, you know, I believe it really ought to be relatively uncontroversial compared to many, the many issues that we. Um, take on in Albany, uh, but you know we have gotten some resistance. So uh, we're happy to still be at it and pushing for it. Um, and I think that, you know, from my perspective, I think it's really critical that to the extent we're gonna have students uh, serving as journalists in our schools and in educational settings, that they have the full experience of uh, being a journalist and having to make choices about what to publish and, you know, pay attention to the standards of journalism and, and the integrity and not have their schools, you know, just step in and kind of do that work uh, on their behalf. And of course, uh, you know, often resulting in censoring, um, you know, and, and I think, you know, uh, some of the part I was also just referring to it is really, I think, more and more a critical time that we, uh, you know, we all pay attention to uh, the different media by which we communicate. I mean, there's a lot of very casual communication going on on social media, often without any, like people people retweet or write things or express opinions without any thought to the sort of veracity, the source, the, um, you know, the, the sort of need to be responsible about positions we take. Um, and, you know, we know that journalism is intended to be a, a different, have different standards. And so, uh, you know, I'm very pleased to be part of this movement. I'm very pleased that you had a lot of opportunities to interact with students who are working as journalists and, of course, uh, mentors and, and uh, educators of journalists as well. And, of course, you know, folks in the, in the uh, journalism profession uh, and the publishers who have been a big part of this. So, you know, thank you all. It's great. It's great to be here. I'm happy to, you know, join the discussion or answer questions or whatever is useful. Thank you. Senator, what brought you to this issue? I, I'm, I'm always interested in what brings people to this issue. Yeah, I mean, just as a general matter, I'm a, a big believer in, in freedom of freedom of speech and freedom of expression, and also in uh, kind of youth, uh, you know, people stepping up when they're uh, young and they're interested in, in getting more involved and getting involved in, in, a, in a manner that they um, you know, that they choose to. And obviously there's a lot of different, you know, I often deal with uh, young people who are getting involved in electoral politics or other things, but, uh, you know, to the extent people want to be involved in journalism, I think it's important that um, they have, you know, have the right to do that and the right to express themselves. I have known a few people who have been active uh, as journalists. I actually was not, uh, did not work with my own school newspaper. I did in college. I, I edited a, uh, Kind of a progressive uh, opinion newspaper mag style magazine um, in college, but uh, but you know I do have I do have friends who had lots of experience as high school journalists, um, and I've been impressed with you know some of the um, 
you know, there have been some, some, in, some very good examples recently of student, students stepping up. My, my former chief of staff, who's now an assembly member, Neely Rosick, uh, who's a Townsend Harris grad and a very big fan of all of this, but, you know, the, obviously that the, the um, you know, the success of Townsend Harris of, uh, you know, uh, unearthing things that perhaps the Department of Education and school were not interested in having unearthed and publishing. And, you know, they've gotten great, great credit for that. And, you know, in, in um, you know, uh, citywide publications as well. So, so, but I've been, I've been impressed over time with, with people who want to take journalism seriously. And I think that that starts young. And so I want to be part of promoting that. Wonderful. Speaking of promoting, we've got uh, Mike and Katina. We've been working together on this for a, a few years. Can you walk us through uh, what's been going on and where where we're going with this? And, uh, either Katina or Mike, you can lead. Katina, why don't you get us uh, started? Sure. Well, first, I want to. This is so exciting for us to have everyone, so many people who care about this issue. Um, here together and focused on it. Mike and I have been doing a lot of work with the students um, directly. Um, and sometimes it feels like we're operating in this void, um, especially when working with, with a student schedule. So it's really nice to be in a room that we're all on the same page, we're all moving forward. So thank you for putting this together and thank you all for, for believing in this. Um, so my name is Katina Perrin. I've been working with teen journalists for the last 25 plus years. Um, and Mike and I have been working together on getting this law passed for three to five years. I think it has been five, yeah. Um, so and we've had so much momentum right now on it. And I think that's like the, the thing that we're very excited to, to ride that wave um, where you know, right now is the right time to for you know, that people are paying attention to the work that journalists are doing and that people are recognizing this is good policy. This is what like one of the chief of staffs we talked to said, this is good policy, it's political, but it's good policy. And so the more we talk to people, when I say we, there's a group, um, and Mike can kind of break down a little bit more what we're doing with the teens, but we have a group of, I don't know how many teens there are, who are actually calling up their senators and their representative and their assembly um, members, sitting down with them, having meetings with them, telling them about the bill, telling them why they are student journalists and why student journalism matters to them and asking them to sponsor this bill. This is a total you know, grassroots team led um, initiative in that way and it's working because we've had since January, we've had how many, like how many um, uh, senators, we have five senators sign on um, to this bill since January. And that was from one-on-one -on -one calls with the students and what, what we're coming up against is that people, legislators don't know about the bill and don't know that this is an issue. And when we're talking to them, the conversation is really around that this is like, this lets young people do good journalism, as well as the idea of other students in schools have more first amendment rights than student journalists do. A group could have, you know, a group could meet every, a club could meet every, you know, week after school and talk about controversial issues and topics they think are important. But if the student newspaper covered one of those meetings, that article could get censored. And so through this bill, we're really trying just to level out the playing field and making sure all students in public high school education have the same um, First Amendment rights. And that's the kind of the message we're moving forward. Um, and so that has been working and we're growing this and we're getting emails and having conversations all the time with young people who want to know more, whether it's because they're, they want to be civically engaged, whether because they're student journalists or they just think it, you know, and they, some, some of these young people recognize that they have a privilege in their school where they don't have any prior review, they don't have any censorship, but they, they know that's not the same in all the schools. And so it's been really, um, you know, encouraging it and, and allows us a lot of uh, to admire in these young people when they, you know, they could go out their day just fine without worrying about this, but they know they have peers, they know they have student journalists in usually under-resourced schools that don't have the, the freedom that they have and they're fighting for them. Um, so, you know, the, having the young people have these meetings with the legislators and have them convincing them to sponsor it is great, but also when having us on the other side working our, our ends to make sure 
that they can have those conversations and they can support their peers is really important. And I think Mike can talk a little bit more about kind of how we, what the different activities the young people have been doing and, and their successes there. Yeah, I think, um, well, first of all, again, I got to echo, thank you for everybody for being on the call, for Tully and Syracuse uh, to host us and, and Assemblywoman Lupardo, Senator Kavanaugh, um, to see your faces again, to have your voices with us again is is thrilling. And um, Assemblywoman, you, you, you've got me fired up for post-budget, like, let's go. Um, it's been five years, uh, and and the genesis of, of this version was in 2017 um, with kids that I work with in, in Corning. And to be where we are now, um, I, I can't say post-COVID, but through maybe the big the big hurdles and obstacles, you know, we had in April of 2019, we had 82 people uh, for an advocacy day in Albany. Um, the Assemblywoman Senator, they hosted us, um, gave us a, a conference room for home base, and our kids fanned out around the legislature for 35 meetings with 35 different legislators. And it was thrilling. I still get goosebumps thinking about it and thinking about the real world advocacy, the grassroots effort, the courage that some of the kids uh, had to have to pick up a phone and talk to a legislative director or somebody in the office to schedule the appointment in the first place. Um, on, on the back end, near the end of the day, um, Assemblyman Palmasano took my kids on an elevator to change floors and be able to look out on the assembly. One of his colleagues got in the elevator with us and the assemblyman said to his colleague, uh, I'd like to introduce you to kids from my district. By the time we got out three floors later, the assemblyman had signed on to the bill. It was literally an elevator pitch. And nothing I think makes us prouder for Katina and me as educators and advocates uh, working with student journalists than to see the civics in action and to see kids who are used to um, amplifying their classmates' voices to use their own. You know, my kids in Corning, we enjoy uh, full, my students enjoy full access to their First Amendment rights. We have an incredible team of administrators who were recognized by the Journalism Education Association as administrators of the year just a few years back for their staunch support of our kids. They get out of the way. And at times, my kids report uh, on topics that could be deemed as controversial or sensitive. They covered on everything from mental health to representation of the teaching faculty in the classroom. They've talked about suicide prevention and COVID and all sorts of other things that in some districts in our state and around the nation, uh, when those topics are brought up in coverage and reporting, principals, administrators, superintendents will say, no, 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 we, we can't have that conversation. It could make the school look bad or students aren't ready to be talking about such things. But students are already talking about such things. And if we don't uh, support them and, and, and foster some responsibility uh, and apply some, some ethics and some guidance and some structure to it, then they're going to be able to have those conversations on TikTok or out on Snapchat or on a blog or on their YouTube channel. I don't think that they shouldn't be. Those are all valid means and medium for those kids to have those conversations and to share those stories. But what a thing for us to have uh, administrators who recognize that with a strong student media program and a student media advisor, we can support these kids and their development as critical thinkers, as problem solvers, as conversation starters to help make our communities better. My superintendent, Michelle Caulfield, and the one before her, Mike Janowski, as well as our principal, Robin Sheehan, every single one of them has said, if your kids bring up some tough conversations or ask some tough questions, uh, or they're able to amplify the voices of their classmates uh, to help us confront an issue or something that we need to be talking about, you know, let's lean into that and let's have that conversation and not let's not hide um, from it. Since January, as Katina noted, we have had kids reaching out to other student journalists around the state to say, hey, we're part of New Voices New York. Would you come along? Here's what we're about. And oh, by the way, we need to get your legislators on the bill. We'd like to teach you uh, about the bill. We'd like to uh, train you as facilitators and then be there alongside uh, shadowing you in conversations uh, with your legislators. Um, it was uh, plus four senators since January. Um, and as Assemblywoman Lupardo noted earlier, we're 20% of the, the state legislators, which is um, incredible. Um, we uh, had a phone bank about three weeks ago where students reached out to 40 of Senator Kavanaugh's uh, uh, colleagues. We took, we left 11 voicemails, talked to 25 office staff, talked to four legislative directors and one chief of staff. 
Um, sounds like a partridge in a pear tree, I know, but it was thrilling for those kids to use their voices, uh, pick up the phone and, and do the work. They're doing the work. Um, and, and of that, I think we can all be proud. Um, a last two note, uh, we know that um, across the country as new voices bills have been passed, there's often interest from the teachers unions, uh, often some interest from the school board associations and the superintendents associations. All of the recent new voices bills nationally have actually had support from those states teachers unions, New Jersey uh, and Vermont and, and quite a few others, Washington state as well. Um, interesting to note that New Jersey beat us to the punch on December 22nd, uh, they signed it over. Um, so we, we, need to, we need to do this, we need to catch up. Uh, but we are planning on meetings with uh, New York State United Teachers and UFT in March. We've also got some meetings in the pipeline uh, with our state superintendents association, um, and the students are preparing for those right now. Um, if there's concerns, we want to hear them out. Uh, we want the kids to advocate and use their voices to, uh, to spread the word and educate. Um, just last week, uh, Katina and I had the pleasure of being on a call with Senator Savino, um, and she really didn't understand that censorship of student media was an issue uh, in schools in her district and around the state. And it was wonderful to have three student journalists on that call explaining that with uh, support of administrators and in districts where uh, students enjoy their First Amendment rights, they can report uh, truthfully and factually on topics of the day for their students and communities. Um, and, and of course, the, the reverse is true, um, that, that censorship does exist. She was very favorable uh, in the meeting and, and made a, a verbal uh, positive commitment there. But uh, just to echo Katina's point, we need to do more education and share uh, with NYSIT and with legislators and with superintendents really what this is about. And not that the kids will just be able to write whatever they want, it's not the case at all. There's solid, sensible, common sense guidelines baked right into the bill. As Assemblywoman Lupardo noted, it's two quick pages. It doesn't cost a thing. It's just good policy. So thank you for having us today, Roy. I want to add something to that. We talked about the people, and this is a pushback we hear a lot, that people are afraid that with this bill, students can publish whatever that they want. That everything will be, there'll be like a, the Wild West will be there and they'll just publish gossip and just rumors and all of that. Here's the thing that we all need to remember more and that we, try, we, we teach and tell any legislator we talk to. There's a teacher in the room. They, they All these journalists have advisors that are guiding and mentoring and teaching the student journalists. They're creating the guardrails and the structure for the young journalists to do their work, right? The young people are, are maybe making their own editorial decisions but they are being guided and mentored by the advisors. And this bill protects advisors. In some schools, and I know this happens in New York, and I know this has happened elsewhere too, that if, if the paper publishes something the principal doesn't like, that the, the advisor will get punished. They will lose um, their, their fee for, for advising will go down, or they'll get a, a, a class that they didn't want to teach. This bill protects the teachers from getting any type of retaliation for something their students publish. That's a really key part of this in which we're trying to talk to make sure that the teachers unions know that. Um, but the other thing to remember too, Mike mentioned that New Jersey already passed the bill. West Virginia passed it outside of their education committee. So New York right now is, I'm not putting a state by state, you know, comparison or war against, but like right now we're behind West Virginia. We need, as New York State, we really need to get this bill forward. We've gotten some great um, confirmation from the Senate Education Chair, who says she was favorable about this, um, wants to move it you know, beyond the committee, but also wants to make sure that after we pass it out of committee, that it will then, um, it will then be successful beyond there. So that's the work that we're doing now is really literally state, like senator by senator and assembly member by assembly member, getting them on board by finding a student journalist in their district, which isn't as easy as it sounds. There's a lot of districts and a lot of schools um, and getting them to create, to, to, to engage them. So we're engaging with young people one-on-one -on -one, and then they are talking to their um, legislators. And so watching that connection happen, watching any legislator talk to a student in their district, they soft, I talked to some of the, I think some of the hardest, um, members in Albany and watching them talk to a student 
their face softens. They want to hear it. They see the passion. They see the concern, and they want to work for them. And so, you know, despite the frustrations we've had, I think during during this whole process of like why why can't this bill pass or why hasn't it passed yet, that that we're, we're chipping away at it. And right now, I think we're you know. We have giant chunks that we're working on that we know will dissolve and move forward. So it's just kind of we need this this um, uh, momentum to move forward. And I think we're doing a great job of it now. And having everyone here and having this attention on it will really help. So thanks for that too. Thank you. And part of the law it really instills professional standards for high school journalists. I'd like to turn to Marie. Marie, uh, you have a lot of experience in journalism. Can you tell us where all that started? Yes, I can tell you. Hi, Roy. Uh, thanks for everybody for being here. I'm so impressed with the work you're doing with uh, student journalists, and uh, it's really uh, it's really heartening to see that happening. Um, I was a student journalist. I'm one of the uh, unlike the assemblywoman. Uh, I actually. Went into the went into the business, and I think working on my high school newspaper opened my eyes to the idea that maybe I could make a living doing it, and you know that that uh, journalism was an option. Uh, and these days, uh, journalism is an option for a lot more people than than uh, you know there used to be just newspapers. Now there's a panoply of media that people can work in, um, and we need good people, and we need people who are grounded in uh, ethics and fairness and integrity. And I think what you're doing at the high school level is, is a terrific uh, foundation for the profession uh, as, uh, you know, as people decide to uh, maybe try to make a living doing it. Um, I think one of, the, one of the ways of censorship that's kind of insidious that maybe uh, we haven't spoken about yet is self-censorship. And I, you know, in my high school, it was a private high school, nuns were in charge. We kind of knew the guardrails. We didn't really push the envelope all that much. And I, you know, now I regret it. But um, you know, it was not really about the hard hitting journalism at the time. It was really more about the process. And I think the process, uh, working with others, collaboration, uh, asking impertinent questions of people in authority, all that stuff is very good training uh, to be journalists, but also to be whatever you wanna be in life. And, so, and, and also to be a, a very good citizen. And uh, I think uh, Katina mentioned earlier that uh, you know, it's, it's, your, it's a civics lesson to be in a uh, student journalist and, uh, these days, uh, you know, we find ourselves editorializing a lot about concepts that we really used to think were just in the air or part of the part of the atmosphere: voting rights and free speech and freedom of the press and democracy. Um, and these are things worth defending and things worth standing up for. Um, and as editorial, as an editorial board, you know, we write editorials at Syracuse.com and the Post Standard that support legislation like this. We've editorialized in favor of this bill, and I, uh, I can probably go out on a limb and say we, we might do so again. Um, and you know, it's great to know that there's a, a groundswell of support happening and that there is some real grassroots lobbying going on, because I think it's very important work. Thank you. Tim, welcome to the discussion. Can you talk a little about uh, Syracuse.com, advanced media, post standard, and your experience in the, in the field. Sure. Um, thanks, Roy. Uh, great to be here on the panel with uh, everyone. Um, Assembly Assemblywoman uh, Lopardo uh, and uh, Senator Kavanaugh, thank you for your support for this important legislation. Um, I thought it maybe I know we got questions piling up, Roy. So I think I'll be, I'll be quick. I'll make a reflection and then um, make an announcement. But I, it's, it's uh, listening to the panel. I, I was uh, I was listening to uh, Katina talk about the criticism of this legislation, the criticism of student journalists, and I thought, okay, so they're they're criticizing uh, the, the student journalists for being maybe being sensational, maybe being biased, maybe talking about things they might not know about, maybe talking about things that might be embarrassing. Well, that's all the same criticism that we get, um, you know, uh, uh, all the time. Um, and uh, I, I, as as the head of a of a of a large uh, news organization, I'm also the chairman of the New York News Publishers Association, which is the trade association for all the large newspapers in the state of New York. 
um, you know, the, the criticism that we get all the time. So, so let me reflect on responsibility real quick. I, I think, um, you, you know, I, 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 you know, of course, the, the, the rights that we're talking about here all come with responsibility. And Mike uh, talked uh, quite elegantly about um, uh, what those responsibilities are. And I hope, you know, everyone would agree that that uh, that, that it's not a burden, it's really a privilege. Um, you know, as a reporter, an editor, a publisher, you always have to operate with integrity. Uh, you always have to be mindful of the impact that your stories are going to have on people, on real, on real people. Um, and, you know, and that is the public opinion. And, you know, that, that, that's where the responsibility is really grounded in is that, the, you know, the founders uh, believe that public opinion was, uh, was, a, was a force to counterbalance uh, the power of government. And so, you know, I think as a, as a publisher, I'm always, we're always should be mindful of the impact our stories have on real people um, and public opinion. How are they going to shape public opinion? So, you know, um, just because the New York Times has a story or has information about public or national security doesn't mean they're going to rush to publish. Just because we may have an embarrassing story about a local politician doesn't mean we rush to publish. Uh, student journalists may have embarrassing information about teachers or school board members or someone or, or fellow students or someone in the community, and it doesn't mean we rush to publish. And I think that's what we're talking about here. While, while the legislation is talking about the, the student, the rights and free speech rights of student journalists, um, really what we're supporting is the practice of journalism here. And it is that, you know, it is the legislation that is going to support um, you're practicing that journalism. So, and I got examples of sort of the trade-offs that we make and responsibilities. You know, maybe we get to those in the in the in the Q and A, Roy. Um, but you know, real real life um, sort of trade-offs or or balances that we have to make to be responsible publishers. So, um, that is, the second thing I wanted to do was I, I guess I get to announce the um, the contest. Um, so um, uh, we are sponsoring uh, the, the uh, editorial writing contest, uh, the Student Journalist Free Speech Act editorial writing contest uh, to spread the word about the Student Journalist Free Speech Act that you've heard here, Syracuse.com, the Post Standard and the Tully Center for Free, Free Speech are sponsoring this editorial writing contest for high school writers. First, second and third place editorials or commentaries will be chosen for publication. The deadline is going to be March 25th, which is four weeks away, so you better get cracking. Um, uh, word limit is 400 to 700 words, uh, and again, we will publish those both on Syracuse.com and in the printed post standard. So uh, I guess we'll, we'll probably send a note out about how to submit entries, um, but essentially we'll need your name, email, phone number, school grade, um, and send those to uh, Tully Center at syr.edu. So um, we are, uh, as Marie said, we have been a, a, a fan of this legislation. Um, this is a terrific thing. I'm glad to see we've got over 70 participants here um, today on a Friday afternoon. Um, uh, so that's, uh, that, that, that's good news too. So happy to sponsor this editorial writing um, uh, contest. Looking forward to the submissions. With that, uh, Roy, I'll, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Questions are piling up, uh, but before we get to the questions, we, I would like to recognize some of the people in the, in the audience today, including uh, the, very, the very own uh, Mary Beth Tinker is joining us. Uh, Mary oh. Beth, I don't know if we can wow. get you on screen wow. for, for a second, but uh, it's a real honor to have you here with us. <laughs> oh boy. There she is. Hello, everyone. Hello. Great Hello. work. It's wonderful Hello. here at the campaign. You're all just doing great work. I admire all of you and the students, and I'm so excited about the campaign. Thank you. It's, it's great to see you again. Mary Beth has been with us a couple of times at, at, at Newhouse and the Tully Center, and uh, she's uh, our favorite pioneer. We wouldn't be here yeah. without, uh, without your armband. <laughs> ah, that's that's Good Thank work, you. everyone. It's great. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for inviting right, me. Beth, thanks for being here and thanks for being with us on the fight. Thank you. I'm with you, definitely. Wonderful. Wonderful. So questions are piling up in, in the Q and A, and I'll I'll just read some of them, and uh, we'll hopefully we'll have an, a little bit of a discussion. We've 
got some time left, so we'll, we'll move that way. Uh, the first question that came in, and this is a free for all for anybody who wants it. Uh, what do you think the most important rights for high schools to recognize in, in their student journalists would be? Katina, I'm, I'm feeling like you could tee this one up perfectly, right? I mean, the, the, it doesn't get more simple than the First Amendment. Right, and I think a lot of this is, it's not necessary, the part is, is the right to publish. It's also this idea of the right not to be self-censored, the right to trust your instincts, the right to tell the stories of your communities that need to be told, the right to ask questions, right? That's the biggest one. This is, you know, this is what journalists are so good at, as we know. We're good at asking questions and the young people have the right to ask those questions. They have the right to representation in, in their schools and in their community. And without being part of the media, they can't do that. I tell young people all the time that because until they can vote, they really, they, there's, there's not a lot of civics that they can do. Um, and they can't, they can ask questions. That doesn't mean a whole lot, but as, as they're part of the media, they get to ask the questions and they are, you know, answers are deserved um, to them. The wording was weird there, but you get it. The answers, people have to answer them because they're part of the media. And that really gives them the power that they need. You don't get a lot of power when you're in high school. You don't have a lot of power when you're you know, 15, 16, 14, 18, you know, until you can vote, that's really how you can use your power. But by letting these young people be members of the media and letting them ask questions, investigate things, explore topics, share stories of their peers, that's really when they have access to power. And that's really something that's a right that they have and that we want to protect. And we just met with our superintendent as a bridge to a regional superintendent down here in the Southern Tier um, the um, regional Kelly Houck represents 21 school districts and is newer to the role and wasn't familiar with the bill. And our super, I'm so thankful to um, Michelle for, for bringing Kelly Houck over to say, this is what some of our kids are working on. Uh, would you like to learn more? And one of the things that she said to me after our students had made the pitch, uh, this was just a week ago, she said, you know, when we keep students as our North Star, we can never go wrong. And I think that the thing that that really inspires me, but also um, is one of the reasons that I, I feel so passionate about this is when you know, I've never met a superintendent or principal, I've never gone to a school district website that says, um, we believe, you know, in their motto line, their tagline, we believe in strict control of what our students think and talk about, right? Our website says students are the center of all we do and, and it's aspirational. And when we ask ourselves, as teachers and as um, allies of students and ad as administrators, if there are any on the call, all of us that are in support of the bill, are we about creating environments of control or are we about creating environments for growth for our students? And there's only one right answer to that question. And, and every educator uh, wants growth for their students. So if we recognize that our student journalists are not tools of PR, to make sure that everything's shiny, happy, and rainbows in our districts all the time. But when our to, to the question, when our students are enabled to ask questions, incisive questions, and, and, and try to uh, be change, change agents or conversation starters, when our students are supported in that growth and in that development as critical thinkers and problem solvers, as communicators and writers and researchers and all the rest, every principal, every superintendent in the state I think would then be proud of the development uh, of those students and, and to send them across the stage to get their diploma and go onward to a place like Newhouse, uh, having um, been part of, of that student's development. Um, if we can grow our kids and seek not to control them, we're gonna have far, far better outcomes for student and community both. Hey Roy, I would I would just jump in for a minute and just and just add from a uh, you know from a practitioner standpoint, um, uh, it's super important. That it, we're in my opinion entering a sort of new golden age in journalism. Uh, Marie talked about the the different platforms and the exploding platforms that are out there, and um, you know the industry uh, uh, the, the industry if it is an industry um, is in need of talent. And the way as many reflected on is you start in high school and you may like it. And, uh, uh, there's something about being a journalist that gets in your blood. And, um, 
uh, and working in these businesses. And it is in high school that you get your first exposure. Um, and it is vitally important um, to the mature um, and mainstream media that uh, folks continue to move into this profession. Absolutely. All right, another question, uh, which is in the same similar vein, but uh, would the panelists like to comment on the importance of protecting free speech for students at a time when school boards, superintendents, and teachers are being threatened with calls for censorship, and this transcends uh, curriculum and uh, and student journalism. Any thoughts on the current state of censorship in schools? Well, I have a lot of feelings about that. I was just about speaking with some students in Iowa yesterday where they've introduced legislation to put cameras in every classroom to monitor teachers and what's said there. There are something like a hundred and some, you know, bills that have been introduced. And you can follow all these bills at Penn America. They're doing a really good job. I was on a panel with them this week of monitoring all of the bills. So yeah, it's a really, really important time. And also I just want to mention the equity issue because only 25% of high schools in the United States have journalism. So those 25% really need to advocate for the issues of the others. And of course we know this is on a racial bias issue and an income you know, bias issue where the wealthier schools have journalism and the others don't in schools with a lot of kids of color, you know, th those kind of issues. So yeah, it's kind of important that the ones who do have it are talking about the issues that affect the whole group. Anyone else wanna add in, add a little? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, Brian, I think, I think it is an important moment to really focus on the need for uh, you know, a wide range of opinions to be uh, considered and, and expressed and you know, getting, getting the sort of underlying dynamics of these conversations you know, out into the open. I think that, um, I mean, schools, you know, we've seen in national elections, like opinions about what's being taught in schools become, and, you know, in statewide elections, uh, opinions about what's being taught in schools are often kicked around among politicians and parent groups and, you know, pundits out there. And I think it's important that the students themselves uh, play a role in that conversation. And I think the best way to do that is to be reporting on, you know, what's going on from the perspective of students in schools um, and also, you know, reporting for a student audience about these forces that may be pushing on, on their school boards, on their administrators and staffers. So I think, I think it's, I think, I think giving students an opportunity to talk about those things, which I mean, almost, I think to the extent administrators are inclined to censor things, probably the things they'd want to censor the most would be you know, stories about efforts to censor them. <laughs> so, you know, if to, ever, efforts to get the schools to censor uh, journalists, journalists or efforts to get the schools to, uh, you know, censor teachers and, and, and or alter the, um, you know, the curriculum for political purposes. So, so I think this is, you know, I think that, that I think that aspect of what's going on in our larger society really is, um, does, is part of a strong case for making sure that journalists have the flexibility to to express themselves, to write, and without, um, you know, without, um, without censorship. Thank you. Uh, another question asks about some of the mechanics of the bill. Uh, what kind of protection is this? The, the question is about whether this prior restraint bill or whether there are some protections for retaliation against students and their advisors for editorial content. There, there are protections um, for people like me, student media advisor. Um, what and Katina spoke briefly to this. You know, what so often happens is if there's a principal or administrator who says we don't want that story to run, or those those kids are rabble rousing, or they're up to it again over at the newspaper. Um, let's let's can uh, Mike Simmons and get him out of there. Um, the bill protects student media advisors like me uh, when we are supporting our kids 
uh, as long as their speech doesn't violate the, the, the uh, terms, the guidelines presented in the bill, right? If it's not libelous, if it's not an invasion of privacy, an incitement to violence, if it's not profane, then it can print. Um, but what happens too often is we are kind of, you know, brushed back at the plate and the principal says to an advisor, you know, it'd be, it'd be good if this didn't run, if you want to keep on running that student media program. And so then we would uh, be, uh, you know, arm twisted into stifling the kids. Um, the, the, the protections, I saw the note, Roy, in the, in the question about, you know, after the piece publishes it, uh, is, are, are the kids uh, protected from scrutiny or facing retaliation? Um, scrutiny? No, right? I, and I think the, the professionals, uh, Tim and Maria on the call would say, you, you guys are scrutinized all the time when you and your reporters publish and questions are asked and it's part of the conversation. That's what journalism is. Um, so uh, could somebody pick up the phone or, or email the student uh, journalist? Could, could students come as students have in, in my school uh, to my yearbook reporters and, and say, hey, you, you missed part of that story or why did you do that that way? Um, we would welcome those questions and also uh, help uh, teach and train our students that that's part of the process. That's part of being in relationship with the public through journalism is being open to those questions, to that scrutiny, to that feedback, right? Um, retaliation, I want to note that in the states that have new voices law uh, laws, uh, and this goes back to concerns that administrators might have, this is a talking point we hear a lot, that the kids are just going to go off the rails and um, that we as administrators, uh, if you will, need to protect the school district from lawsuits. There has not been a successful case brought against student journalists in states that have new voices laws. Uh, in fact, when administrators stay out of censorship and go take a more hands-off approach, they are better shielded against lawsuits um, because the responsibility lies with the kids. And so far, kids across the country in these 15 states have a sterling track record. Doesn't mean that they're not covering things that are touchy or controversial or ask some difficult questions, but within parameters of uh, law and lawsuits, there's not been a successful case brought. And to Mike's point, the as soon as an administrator, as soon as a principal touches a piece of content that a student journalist is about to publish, they are then part of the process. If they stay hands off, then they are not part of any, they're, they're not liable for any of the information that gets published. But as soon as they start getting involved and start trying to play journalists, right, the, the teachers are trained with being journalists, they're trained with being journalism educators, the principals are not. And by having this law in place, we're protecting the young people's ability to practice, right? We use the example all the time. If a basketball team is losing a game, the principal doesn't go out and finish it for them, right? And the, and the, the school's basketball scores that are part of the school's reputation, just like the how a student's publication is part of the reputation. They have to leave that in terms of the, the people who are trained to both teach this and to conduct it versus the principals. I know they're very concerned about their repu reputation, but as soon as they start trying to touch the content, then they're actually at more risk than they were beforehand. I would just note, it is an interesting an interesting aspect of this question is whether, um, so that the, 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 the bill has this very specific language about making sure that administrators and advisors and schools are not liable for the content their students publish. Um, there is a, you know, Part of that question, which is about whether students themselves who publish, and I think I think Mike made this point, there's a difference between being protected from scrutiny, which of course we're all we're all scrutinized for the things we think and say, and that's part of the journalistic process. But you know, to the extent students might publish something and then have the school itself take some adverse action against them, and, and I think maybe it's something that might be worth considering whether we want to. Uh, ensure that students are not protected, given that, given that students are, you know, relying on their schools for fairness in, in a variety of settings beyond their school publications. I think it might be worth exploring whether we want to indicate that, you know, there's an intent of the legislature that, that students not be retaliated against if they publish things that their schools don't appreciate. Wonderful. We're getting close to the hour, so where do we go from here? Next steps, goals, aspirations. 
how can we leverage what we've uh, begun? Some of our, our primary outreach um, in March is going to be centered on the professional organizations with NYSET, UFT, and the Superintendents Association, perhaps also the School Boards Association. Um, the students who, with whom I'm closest and, and those uh, that are um, more primarily involved in, in the coalition, uh, and hopefully some of you in attendance today, uh, we peaked at around, I think, 80 participants. Uh, we want you to be part of New Voices New York. We want you to join up. Um, there's no membership fee, and we certainly know how to, to work with student schedules and, and busy students, all the rest. There's easily um, something that everybody can do, whether it's sending an email, advocating with your own legislator. Um, do, we've had students involved in doing graphic design for outreach so that we can have materials go out to legislators and whatnot. But this time in, in March, we really want to focus on um, hearing, uh, sorry, sharing the New Voices story with um, the teachers union with the superintendents and, and school boards associations uh, and explaining to them how we see so many places where we are allies uh, and, and, and there's a natural fit for them to support this bill as well. Um, they believe in developing New York's ne next uh, problem solvers and innovators and change makers. So do we. They believe in the power of student voice and experience and growth. So do we. Um, we can just, I could go for an hour on all of the parallels there uh, and all the reasons that, that we want their support as well. So in taking those meetings and, and perhaps in hearing of concerns, uh, we're looking forward to those conversations such that when our friends in the assembly and the legislature get through that April 1st, I think it is around then the deadline um, for the budget, that we're ready to go. Um, certainly with thankfully with, with COVID concerns easing to an extent, it would be our fondest hope to take a whole crew of kids to Albany in April. I am so ready to hop on a bus and ride for three and a half hours at 55 miles an hour to get to Albany and do it again uh, with bells on. And, you know, we went, I will tell you in 2018, we had three kids. In 2019, we had 75. Like we can do this and we can mobilize and be there. Um, I would love to have uh, Tim and Marie's support uh, with their journalists and with their organizations for all of us to be there in a proactive way with our voices joined to say that we have to do this for the Empire State's student journalists. Um, we're going to continue outreach uh, at the legislator level, um, both at uh, with New Voices New York uh, uh, statewide, but specific to that particular power that students as constituents have to reach out to their specific legislators. It's been very effective for us and we're feeling really proud of that plus four in the Senate, Senator Kavanaugh, uh, with your colleagues. It was a really productive uh, January and February for us. Um, we're on the move and we've got momentum. We're really excited for what's happening next. Wonderful. I might, I, if I could just, if I might just uh, chime in here. Um, I think that sounds great. I think your strategy of reaching out to the professional groups and really giving them the attention that they deserve is, is very important while we're continuing uh, to try to get more sponsors. Uh, I'm going to be putting out a um, solicitation for more sponsors. And I think I'm going to draw upon this conversation. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm particularly uh, struck by a, a quote from, from Tim where he said, we're supporting the practice of journalism. And that really is what this is about. And I, I think, you know, if we had an editorial or, or perhaps, uh, Marie, if we could get a, a link to your previous uh, editorial, that might be extremely helpful to show that this has reached sort of a mainstream. I think also I'm going to reach out to the governor's office around this because for all the effort that we undertake, and even if we were to pass the bill, she has to sign the bill. So sometimes we ignore that last piece of the puzzle. I think to bring her into the conversation, get her excited about it or her team, uh, uh, her executive team, think would be a good idea. So I think uh, I will sign up to uh, to take care of that. And just on a, a personal note, I just want to personally thank uh, Mary Beth Tinker. Uh, I was in high school when you were in high school. <laughs> and it meant an awful lot to us uh, in 1969 that you uh, that you did what you did. Our issue wasn't the armband. Our issue was trying to report on the war. And we uh, you know, we're very grateful for your efforts. So thank you. Wow, that's so interesting, Donna. And thank you so much for saying that. And I'm so glad to be with you on this uh, effort. And it's really great. And I'm so glad to be with all of you. So it's really a good thing. And what a time it is. So important for youth voices to speak up. 
and our, their allies, all of, all of us. Right. Wonderful. Well, we're over the hour, and I just want to thank all our panelists, Assemblywoman Lopardo, Senator Kavanaugh, Mike, Katina, Christina, Tim Marie, and Mary Beth. It was great to see you in, in this venue. Thank you right. so much for your time. Please. Wait, I'm sorry. Could I interrupt for just a quick second? I know you're about sure. to wrap up. But if I could just ask Tim Kennedy one quick question about your contest. Are those editorials that would have been published already in a school newspaper or any editorial that the student would write on a topic? Do they already have to have been printed somewhere? Uh, I don't, it doesn't, uh, no. it doesn't already, uh, Roy, maybe I'll defer to you. What, how do you want to? We uh, either or. Either or, yeah. Something that's already okay. been written in a student newspaper would be exceptional as a reprint or something, so original content would also suffice. Perfect. And I, I put the details of the contest into the chat. So yeah. for everybody to see, you could, you know. Uh, very good. So thank you very your, much. Send, send your stuff. And also the link to the editorials in there too. Wonderful. Okay, thanks. Sorry to everyone. Interrupt. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much. I could spend the rest of the afternoon talking about this, but people actually have real jobs and have to do work today. So uh, again, thank you for your time, your effort. I uh, thank the uh, attendees at one point. We did have 93, which is pretty good awesome. for the afternoon. Uh, it is snowing out here, so nothing <laughs> else to do than sit in front of your computer. But uh, this is, is not the last word on our, on our, on our, our fight on this and look forward to working with all of you and talking with you in the future. So thank you all and uh, be well, be safe. Thanks everybody. Thanks, thank you all. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Great, great panel. Have a Bye. nice weekend.